In this video, I'll be going over exactly how to conquer the changes in Season 11 and dominate the jungle with one of the strongest junglers in the game right now being Echo. Echo is an extremely versatile and self-sufficient champion that when ramped up, is able to carry games entirely by himself. Welcome to the ultimate guide to Echo in Season 11. Here's a quick breakdown of how we'll be going over the video. I'll touch on general concepts of Echo's purpose as a champion, and what success looks like in games that you are doing well on him. We'll then discuss different components of his kit and how we can work better to optimize each one of these. This includes going over different jungle matchups, rune optimizations, ability maxing, your build, pathing, how to play out ganks, and how to play out each phase of the game. But first, if you haven't yet, please subscribe for more content like this. It's free, and you can always unsub if you want later as well. Only 4% of you guys in my audience are currently subscribed, so let's get that number up together. On to the video. Echo is a great, self-sufficient jungler that strives on being able to make plays on the map by himself, but is also able to provide a lot of value to a team. His incredibly high scalings and high mobility allow a skilled Echo player to be greatly rewarded and will be able to carry a team by himself. He's also incredibly tempo heavy once he gets ahead, so at that point there's no hope for the enemy jungler. Let's start with rune choices. For Echo, there's really only one main rune that you should be going for, and right now that's Dark Harvest. It's by far the most consistent and most flexible rune on him because it complements his style of assassinating the enemy backline and playing for big bursts of damage. You might think Electrocute is good too, and it's definitely not a bad choice on him, but Dark Harvest is easier to proc and doesn't rely on Echo having to stick to an engagement for too long. For the rest of your primary domination tree, you take Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter. Sudden Impact is really good because it complements Echo's dash really well. Eyeball Collection is just the best in-slot rune for Echo here because it will give him the stacks the fastest and most consistently. Ravenous Hunter is a huge help for Echo in later clears as the Omnivamp will keep his HP in fights. Ravenous Hunter is also one of the most OP runes in the game right now, so you should always take it when you can. For your secondary tree, going Inspiration is the most consistent page for Echo, but there are some players that also prefer Sorcery. Many players choose to go for the Inspiration build because Echo is a champion that is fairly reliant on his runes in order to deal damage and get the tools he needs. Inspiration best answers this because Magical Footwear allows him to directly save money in order to purchase items like Lishbane and Rocket Belt, and Cosmic Insight both increases his clear speed by providing a lower CD on Smite, and also reduces the cooldowns of these items once he gets them. Echo's core item build includes both Rocket Belt and Zhonya's, so reducing the cooldowns of these items would be a great help in times of need. For sorcery, I've seen a few options go around depending on what preferences you have. I think that inspiration is still the better tree overall, but if you really like what sorcery brings to the table, then go ahead. The best combo for this tree in this case would likely be the Nimbus Cloak Transcendence pairing because junglers can abuse the movement speed buff with smite, and then Echo can benefit pretty well from the CDR on Transcendence. For your rune stats, you generally just want to take attack speed, adaptive force, and armor every game. This gives you the most well-rounded stat boost that increases clear speed, skirmishing capability, and with the armor also providing some very important survivability in your early clears. Moving on from runes, we'll get into some of Echo's jungle matchups. Although junglers cannot be countered as hard as in places like mid or top, there are definitely some junglers that can give him a hard time in the early game, and if he gets to deny too much tempo, it will result in him being relatively useless in the later stages of the game. So although he won't get countered directly, Echo won't be able to answer most of the current junglers in the game if they get ahead. Think champions like Olaf, Hecarim, and Graves, all champions that thrive off of running over the enemy in the early game and yoinking as many camps as possible. Getting behind against these champs basically means that you will always be behind on tempo against them, even if you power farm, so it's really hard to catch up. Most of the time, you won't even receive an opportunity to power farm against them anyways because they'll be trying to take your camps away. The key to winning these matchups will be having lanes that are at least even in their own matchups, so I recommend not only studying up some of the jungle matchups, but also have some basic knowledge as to which lanes on your team are winning ones. This will not only help you decide whether or not it's a good situation to play Echo, but also helps dictate how you play the game and what lanes are better to gank at what time, and helps you figure out things like early game pathing. Against mage type junglers like Karthus, Nidalee, and Talia, Echo will be able to fare decently well because of his assassin like kit, and meaning that in 1v1 skirmishes, he'll have a pretty good chance of winning out. Echo will also be able to skirmish tank junglers well in, in the earlier phases of the game, but if the Echo player makes too many mistakes, then the tank will become too big for the Echo to kill off easily. When this situation comes into play, you'll then have to focus on targeting the enemy backline in fights and whatnot, but we'll dive a little bit deeper into this topic when we get to playing out the mid to late game. No matter the matchup, Echo takes some time and items to ramp up and build temple to spike in the mid game and is what I would consider a weaker early game jungler. This translates into a playstyle of farming and only taking gank angles that you know for sure are going to be free. Echo's combos are pretty interesting in that you can play out your ganks differently depending on how you're positioned in a fight and what tools you need at what moments in the game. They also vary depending on what items the Echo player will have. Depending on the situation, Echo can have some very high impact combos that allow him to be disgusting in fights. We'll start with some really basic ones then move on to some more variants of combos as we continue. So a really basic fundamental to your Echo combo 
combos is being able to weave in your different abilities with your E in order to make your combos more efficient. Using EQ is a really classic example of this because it basically gives you a really long Q. Since your Q also slows, it also lets you hit Q angles where they may have not been able to without using your E. You can also use WE to kind of cancel the animation of your W and give yourself more flexibility to stick onto your opponents. Your E is also really nasty once you get Rocket Belt as well because it really extends the range of your E and surprises your enemies once it's available. Since Rocket Belt also gives you a ton of movement speed while running towards enemy champions, it basically ensures that Echo will be able to reach enemy backlines or at least connect his E when going for a gank. This also means that instead of trying to EQ for a combo, you can instead use E plus Rocket Belt to close the distance and once your enhanced auto attack snaps to the enemy champion, you can use the Q point blank in order to guarantee the damage is slow. Although it doesn't look that intuitive at first, Rocket Belt is actually also an auto attack reset. This means that in situations where you're already able to close the distance without using the movement speed of Rocket Belt, you can instead proc the active at point blank range so that you can get the auto attack reset. The combo in this case would be to EQ, then use the E auto to close the gap, and then Rocket Belt auto again to finish the combo. Echo's ultimate being Chrono Break is another tool that he can use in order to spice up his executions. The most common use case would be at the end of a combo where Echo can use it as a free escape at times where he otherwise would just die off. It can also be used really well during team fights to use as a damage tool because it also happens to have 150% AP ratio, which is one of the highest ones in the game. Having Sonya's also helps Echo use Chrono Break with really high levels of effectiveness in fights. Knowing that the ghost will always follow Echo's position after 4 seconds, Echo can run in and use Sonya's to buy himself enough time to be in the middle of the fight and allow his ghost to catch up to him. This combo will also work really well with his W because it takes 3 seconds for the zone to wind up, and since Sonya's provides 2.5 seconds of invuln, this means you essentially get the W stun off for free. After the zone procs and Echo loses the shield and some HP, he can simply press R to get everything back, deal a huge chunk of damage, and continue to impact the fight. You don't always have to wait this long to use this combo to use your ultimates either, since it does so much damage anyways. As long as you have a decent angle to get a high amount of damage off, it's usually just worth it to pop your ulti. One of the most important things to succeed on Echo in your games is making sure you're you're able to get your items. Echo relies on getting his three core items being Rocket Belt, Lich Bane, and Zhonya's in order to add a lot more damage and versatility to his kit, and be it the annoying champ that he loves to be in fights. Sometimes the ordering of these items or what other items you get along the way will change depending on the situation, but these are by far the most essential components of Echo's kit. Because of the necessity of everything here, there isn't going to be too much variance from game to game, but the reality is that most of the variance in your build on Echo will come from your later items. With that in mind, let's move on to the build. You typically want to start Red Smite in the jungle for strong or dueling potential. Then moving on to your mythic item, you of course want to be taking your Hextech Rocket Belt. This item has and will still be the core to a great Echo build, and we've been seeing this since its predecessor in Hextech Proto Belt. Some players have been decently successful with the Night Harvester, and I think it's a good item if you're especially snowballed, but Rocket Belt is by far the most consistent and most effective choice for Echo. Moving from there, we of course have to move on to Echo's other core items, being Lich Bane and Zhonya's. They're both great choices and equally important to his kit, but what items you need at what time will change his power spike and utility. Lich Bane will provide a not more damage thanks to its spellblade passive and is what you want to go for in a generally neutral game state because it lets you impact fikes more easily. However, you may have to upfront the Zhonya's purchase in situations where it's hard for you to get away with just Lich Bane. If the enemy has a fed AD champion and you otherwise won't be able to handle it, buying Zhonya's will help mitigate the damage of that champion while still giving you a decent item to work with. If the enemy has a fed AP champion or you just can't afford to go Zhonya's at that moment, you can also just build Lich Bane first anyways and then pick up a stopwatch when it's convenient. This will help provide a more balanced way to access the really good Zhonya's combos that Echo has while still maximizing your damage. Whichever item you didn't finish first will just be your third item instead, so as long as you get both Lich Bane and Zhonya's as items 2 or 3 in whatever order, you can't really go wrong here. One other thing to consider is the potential to go Dark Seal and eventually transition that into a Magi's purchase for Echo. Champs that have high survivability like Echo are really strong with Dark Seal because their kits allow them to naturally hold onto their stacks once they get some, usually giving them a ton of free AP without much room for counterplay. However, I'd only pick up Dark Seal if it's convenient and only upgrade it to a Magi's if you're snowballing hard. The best part about Magi's is that it counts as a legendary item and therefore works with your mythic passive. It's likely not going to be much, but Magi's also doesn't cost much, so it's a little bonus as well. Now onto boot choices. Echo is pretty self-reliant and can get away with building more damage than some other champs, so Sork Shoes are going to be the go-to choice most of the time. If the enemy literally has like 5 AD champs or 5 AP champs, then it's probably a decent idea to go Steel Caps or Merc Treads depending on the situation. However, the, the 18 Magic Pen from Sorks is really good for executing plays, so always get it when you can. Usually by this point, the game will end before you have to worry about your final 2 items, but if you manage to get there, you still have a few decent options. 
Rabadons and Void Staff are two great choices to start off as a fourth completed item. Void Staff is really cheap and gives you a damage spike really fast, whereas Rabadons complements Echo's scalings really well since he has really high innate scalings and it will also add damage to Lich Pain and Rocket Belt. Other good options will basically be tech choices to counter the enemy team comp. More often than not, you'll run into enemies that have a ton of healing in today's metagame, so picking up an Oblivion Orb or a full Morello later on will be a wise choice in cutting that down. Items like Cosmic Drive and Banshee's Veil are also really good choices if you need mobility or more survivability. Some players have even teched Nash's Tooth before um, for sustained damage. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's still a pretty decent option if the enemy is too tanky. For Echo's jungle build, I've also gone ahead and included an item set in the description as well for your use, so feel free to check it out and apply it to your own games. For jungle, I always recommend pathing for the lane or area of the map you want to play for, and I think Echo is no exception to this rule. However, there are differences in his first clear depending on which part of the map he starts. Either way though, Echo excels at doing a 5 camp clear into contesting for her crab most of the time. Echo does prefer clearing red side though because his Q is really good for clearing out the AoE camps like Krugs and Raptors. Assuming he starts red, the Echo will do red into Krugs and then Raptors, then move on to Wolves and then Blue. At that point, you can then contest whatever crab is necessary. On Blue's side, you can clear Blue into Gromp and Wolves. When doing the Gromp, make sure to smite the Gromp when it's high HP, so that Echo can get max value when from his W passive, which deals missing HP damage per auto attack to low targets. After finishing blue side, you finish off with chickens and red into crab. When starting off your clear, Echo likes to take W at level 1 for decent damage and the long stun onto the jungle camps. It is good practice on him to use your W just after a minute 27 on the clock so that you perfectly time the stun against the jungle camp. It's also really good to be constantly proccing Echo's passive on every single jungle creep since it adds a lot of speed to his clears, especially as the game progresses. One good option to keep open as well if is to consider the possibility of ganking after clearing 3 camps. Starting red side naturally gives you this opportunity as you can gank mid right after clearing your 3 camps. On blue side you can still do this but it's not as viable because you need the red buff passive in order to uh, keep up sustained CC, but it's still pretty good. After your first clear, Echo wants to focus on clearing camp still as his passive damage really starts to ramp up and give him a lot of tempo in the mid game. Getting any free kills at this point will also slingshot you ahead of the enemy as well. Ganking on Echo is rather an unintuitive sometimes because he requires a lot of setup in order to get a good gank off, and a lot of it is also pretty contingent on him hitting his W stun. The basic combo for it would be to start off with a W on the area where the enemy laner will stand, and then walking into the zone in order to pressure the enemy champ. If you're behind the enemy, it's also good to use your Q to get some damage off and get your passive ticking as well. If you're Wing and you're positioned in front of the enemy, you'll likely have to use your E to close the gap and proc the stun. However, starting from behind the enemy would be ideal in this scenario. If you still had E by this point though, feel free to use it to proc your passive and use that move speed to keep up with the enemy while they're still trying to escape. For ganks like tower dives, you can again use W to start the dive and then basically use your autos and Qs to maintain pressure on the opponent while they're getting dove. It's also good for Echo to start off the gank because he can break turret aggro with his ult as well. The same mentality for these ganks will also apply when Echo plays in teamfights because his job is to flank the enemy backline and assassinate their squishies. Speaking of these teamfights, Echo's teamfight potential is fairly strong thanks to his W and his ability to be a constant threat in the fights in their entirety. Leading engages with his parallel convergence stun combo and then just dashing into the enemy backline, he's extremely hard to deal with in these situations, especially when he's ahead. For teamfights, use the gank and fight combos that I've explained earlier to position yourself to dive the enemy backline. It will always be better if you can find a way to start off behind the enemy as well, as jumping right through the enemy frontline is not always ideal. There are times where you can just get one shot right away and not get an opportunity to make it to the squishy targets you're looking for. One thing to keep in mind as well is any CC the enemy has to stop you from getting your ults off, as that is the primary thing stopping you from doing what you want to do in these fights, which is especially important for things like your ultimate. After you get your initial target, you also want to quickly decide your next move, whether that'll be using Zhonya's to buy yourself more time, or just cash in your ultimate to buy time for your next rotation. You also want to generally play around your team on Jungle Echo for this reason, Echo is a good split pusher, but as a jungler, you always want to be playing for the objectives that are coming up, so it's only good to split in order to push out waves or generate pressure or get a pick. It's really bad if you're side leaning and then you give up a free Baron due to bad positioning, even if you get something out of it. Overall, Echo is one of my favorite picks for a solo queue jungler due to his great combination of high damage, high utility, and his ability to punish mistakes that his enemies make. If there's anything else you'd like to know about Echo, or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll make sure to answer it. I'm also considering doing some coaching, so feel free to ask me as well if you need it. I might do a couple of thoughts on stream or something in the future. Hope this guide finds you well, and I will see you in the next video. Stay fresh.